Well, it's been another week, and this time I would like to do something differently. In addition with the living news on the accomplished topic known as Zelda Wii U, I would like to give my own thoughts on where the Zelda series is heading. Of course, I will talk about new information, but I will also tie in new facts with already established information and provide a cohesive remark on the future of the Zelda franchise. Now, straying away from these formalities, let's talk about some current news. In a recent interview with IG Anuma and Yosuke Hayashi has discussed the beginning development stages of Hyrule Warriors. In this interview, a really captivating clue was revealed that showcases the internal side of the team. Here is the quote from Anuma. We certainly have Zelda fans within our development team as well. We have people who were raised as kids on Zelda. I can come up with just an idea and off the cuff say, let's not do this, and they'll just insist, no, don't touch that, that's not acceptable. Then I'll sit down with them and go, why do you feel like that? Why do you feel this way? And we'll have a conversation. We'll come up with something that's acceptable both to myself and to the very ardent fans of the series. I think what we're ultimately able to come up with is something really useful unique and special that offers that something new, while at the same time staying true to what the fans of the series really come to love. Now, that statement does imply that formula of utilizing new strategies to develop games while still implementing standard conventions of the Zelda series does stretch out to development team number 3. Later on in the interview, Anuma did give some statements regarding future Zelda conventions. You have the map and there are battle areas all across this expansive battlefield. The things are happening, regardless of whether or not you're in this particular space. How you approach reclaiming these different areas on the map really changes how you progress through the game. So it's really really dynamic, it's really really expansive. It also increases replay value because if you change your strategy, your process will also change. Having worked on a game that has this kind of expansive battlefield style has really opened my eyes to new discoveries, and my thought and approach to gameplay has really deepened. I see many, many possibilities now that I've worked on this project with Tecmo Koei. In other words, not only Wind Waker HD, Link Between Worlds, and the first Legend of Zelda game has had a defining impact on the development of Zelda Wii U, but Hyrule Warriors has had a development impact on Zelda Wii U as well. However, we are not sure on what level. Anuma wishes to incorporate mechanics from certain games, however, it is likely that the gameplay will be dynamic and expansive. To back up my claim, we go to this article by Nintendo Everything featuring Aiji Anuma in the Japanese Nintendo News. In this article, Anuma has asserted that Zelda Wii you should be a game filled with mystery. If you go to the other side of that mountain, what will happen? Or I have seen this from this side, but I wonder what appears from the other side. You can play like this, but you might not be that free in the game quite yet. At this time in the Wii U version, if you just think you can continue walking freely beyond the mountains over the valleys, you will just continue to walk until you're very far away. So how you will play the new Zelda? Well, I look forward to how everyone will do so. In addition, in a Japanese Nintendo site, in regards to Zelda Wii U, this description surfaces. This software is a Wii U edition New Legend of Zelda series. Faced with mysteries in the world of Zelda spread indefinitely without boundaries, a new link, a new nemesis. However, I digress back to Anuma's vague statements regarding Zelda Wii U. So of course Anuma won't say much regarding Zelda Wii U, however I believe there is a bigger reason behind this than just being straight laced about new information being the producer. As I said in previous episodes, the director of Zelda Wii U has not been revealed, and there has yet to be a subtitle for Zelda Wii U as well. In terms of a marketing strategy, it could very well be that Nintendo wants consumers to focus on the core gameplay mechanics of the game, not the story. However, it has struck me that there could be another reason why. Let me explain. Now, even before Zelda Wii U's reveal, Zelda Wii U was compared to the first Legend of Zelda title an awful lot. So we can make a valid statement in accordance with past interviews. I have just went over that Zelda Wii U will incorporate new mechanics but at the same time be true to the very first Legend of Zelda title in terms of exploration. Now, let's take a look at the first Legend of Zelda's development cycle. Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka were the first creators of the game. Miyamoto acted as producer while Tezuka wrote the story and 
that script. Now, this is where things get really interesting. When the first Zelda game was released in Japan, many consumers were both shocked and confused in how to play the game. However, something special happened. Many players had to communicate with each other in order to find their way in the field. Both exploration and discovery were placed as premiums, with players feeling completely isolated and immersed in the world. The main inspiration for the game came from Miyamoto's childhood experiences in Kyoto. In his childhood, he would explore the countryside without a map, finding lakes, creeks, and trying to find his way became staples in the game. Now, notice that Miyamoto reminisced on Kyoto when developing the very first Zelda title. Nearly 30 years later, Miyamoto again compared his hometown of Kyoto with Zelda Wii U. So what does that tell you? Well, it does tell us that Zelda Wii U will expand upon the very first Legend of Zelda title's philosophy regarding exploration and discovery. However, we already knew that. There is something else that was overlooked. Remember when the first Legend of Zelda title was released in Japan? Many players were confused but determined to explore the world. To do this, players worked together on where to go in the map and find hidden locations. It was this cooperation that made the first Zelda game to not feel like a game, but more like an experience. Now, I'm assuming you're asking me, where is this going? Well, it has been noted that multiplayer in some capacity will be in Zelda Wii U. If you ask me if any multiplayer components would be apparent in the game, it would have something to do in cooperating with other players to find certain locations or routes. Now, I'm not saying the game will be multiplayer in gameplay, but some sort of feature that promotes finding new locations will most likely be in the game. Now then, let's discuss a topic that has escaped the minds of many, Zelda Wii U's director. For whatever reason, be marketing strategy or straight lace reveal, Nintendo has not released who is directing Zelda Wii U. However, we do have a list of candidates whom are likely to do so. These candidates are Hiramasa Shikata, the director of Link Between Worlds, Hidemaru Fujibayashi, the director of Skyward Sword, or another likely candidate may be a brand new director whom has risen in the ranks of development team number three. Personally, between Shikata and Fujibayashi, I believe Shikata is more likely to develop the game. In the January of 2014, a Game Informer interview was released featuring him. In this interview, he has clarified that future Zelda games won't necessarily run at 60 frames per second such as Link Between Worlds. Shikata also stated that he hopes Zelda fans will accept changes made to the future of the Zelda series. Now, I'm personally shocked that this interview isn't as viral as it should be. Think about this interview analytically. Clearly, Shikanta has a deep understanding of programming and hardware in developing games, but he also knows future Zelda endeavors regarding change. In addition, with his own philosophy that reinforces Anuma and Miyamoto's desire for change supplements this particular theory. It may be a stretch to say the least, but I personally believe there is a strong chance that Shikanta may be the director of Zelda Wii U. However, let's take a look at Shikanta's track record, which is impressive to say the least. He worked as field designer for Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and Wind Waker. In Twilight Princess, he was made assistant director, and in Link Between Worlds, he was made director. In all honesty, I believe this is the man along with Hiromaru Fujibayashi are going to succeed IG Anuma when he retires. Anyways, what do you guys think? Sure, I made this video, but that doesn't mean I'm right. I'm sure somebody watching this video knows something that I don't, so please comment away. Now, lastly, let's talk about Hyrule Warriors news. Since the game is on the precipice of being released in Japan, hardly any new relevant information won't be revealed until then. However, the limited edition bundle of the game has been revealed to be released in Europe. Not only that, but this glorious edition is also coming to Australia and New Zealand, but not America, which is disappointing to me. As far as I know, the only exclusive the US gets, well, it's not really an exclusive, it's a pre-order bonus. Well, it is what it is. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of pre-order bonuses or DLC, but that's another thing. Also, there are a couple of so-called news that I want to debunk and discuss. Mainly the Majora's Mask art that was sent out by Nintendo and the supposed February 2015 release of Zelda Wii U. Starting with the Majora's Mask art, it is just art that was sent out in recognition with the Hanabi Festival in Japan. Personally, I don't really believe this is really explicit news. However, some are getting into a frenzy because of this art which is not really so much as a leak or a hint. Now, I want to debunk the supposed February 2015 release of Zelda Wii U. Before I explain anything, this is false. Nintendo never discussed the exact release date of Zelda Wii U. How this started is when Global Christian Post misread Nintendo interviews. In fact, Nintendo has clarified that the game won't be released until sometime after E3 2015. I just wanted to discuss and clarify these rumors since they are really taking the internet by storm and people are actually placing a lot of faith in them. Well, that's my video for this week. I pulled some serious all-nighters on this one, so hope you liked it. 
Special thanks goes to Voice Bros, Lowe's Jam, Murderholic351, Jiggly Slut420, Sosuke Power, and Nice Pasta for contributing to this Monday's episode. If you have any information pertaining to anything Zelda related, please comment below with the source and I'll feature your name in next Monday's episode. Next Monday's episode, episode 7, will be a big one. In episode 7 coming next Monday, I'll be going over everything we know about a Majora's Mask remake. Episode 7 will be coming on August 18th next Monday. Before I sign out, I would like to make several announcements. Remember the Creepypasta channel I talked about in previous episodes? Well, well, let's just say expect something on Tuesday, August 12th. If you are into podcasts, our new podcast series, The All Night Cast, delivers weekly episodes every Wednesday. Last week, we featured special guest HMK. Click here to see it. Our latest episode will be released this Wednesday on the 13th. Well, that's all I have to say for now. If you like this video, please hit the like button since it really does support me. Also, as soon as this channel reaches 10,000 subscribers, I will do a very special giveaway. More details will be revealed in the future. Anyways, please like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. I sincerely hope whoever's watching this is doing well. Anyways, till then, this is the video of the day. Blimey, Harry, didn't you ever wonder where your dad learned it all? Learn what? You're a faggot, Harry. I'm a what? A faggot. And a thumping good a night wager, once you trade up a little. I can't be a... A, a, a faggot. I mean, I'm... Oi, that's not your cake, you fat cunt! Ah. Now, you're fucked. Ah, ah.